Hello everyone and welcome to the Gunpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's review of the Full Mechanics Raider Gundam comes to you courtesy of those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Plamo and Gunpla here in North America. With a private warehouse option, flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, and a vast catalog that's restocked regularly, they've got you covered if you're in North America. When you're checking out that vast catalog, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLA NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. So overall, I have to say I'm pretty pleased. I was a little concerned with the transformation, and as a <laughs> spoiler, I guess, I'm still not super sold on it, but I do think that Bandai put the time into this transformation to make it really something special for the full mechanics line. Now, it's still not a master grade, but it has a lot of very interesting, unique engineering that goes into hiding some of the bits for the transformation, how they pop out, how everything goes together. For the most part, it's not parts for me. The only thing that's really kind of parts for me is like a little base that goes on the bottom of the uh, mace spike ball thingy uh, for a stand, but everything else is already there. It's actually really interesting. I would say it's more complex than that of the Calamity, but it's still not a master grade. So if that's kind of the middle ground you're looking for, this is the kit for you. Now, in terms of its visuals, I will say it's not quite as good as that of the Calamity before it. It is still very visually impressive, but being this very dark black gray kind of dark blue navy mix, a lot of the surface detailing doesn't pop out as much. So your panel lining is not going to really go as far, kind of helps in some areas, but generally speaking, uh, you're not going to use it a lot. And for here, I've not actually panel lined anything but the V-fin uh, in the shoulders. Everything else is just as it is out of the box. Now you do get some decal stickers that will help kind of break that up, but just like the Calamity right out of box, this is very visually impressive. It's kind of Master Grade-esque in terms of its visuals. This is a little less in that degree, but it's still very nice looking. Everything is molded in plastic that you see here, so the yellow bits on the wings, the chest, and the head, all plastic. The red bits on the thrusters on the legs and the backpack, all plastic. I do wish the little extended thruster parts that come out of that were a different color other than that dark navy, maybe a lighter gray or something, but it's fine. A little bit of paint goes a long way with stuff like that, but that's kind of the one visual thing. I'm like, eh, that could have been better. You do have the claws that go just behind the back in between the back and the wings. Those look really good. They're molded in a nice kind of bluish gray. It's, it's very good looking. You have kind of the more standard gray for the base of the claws and some of the internal bits. You have a good variety of color as well. The dark navy plays off the black and the gray very well. The red and the yellow are very striking for accent colors. And it all really ties together. Nothing feels out of place on this kit, particularly at least for me. Now, in terms of the top portion, the head, while being one of the goofier heads in Gundam, is actually really nice looking. It's very intimidating. You've got the beam cannon that comes out of the mouth. And as long as you don't panel line the lines in the mouth, it actually doesn't look that bad. I think that's probably where it maybe looks a little too busy for people if you do that. But overall, the head sculpt is very nice. It's very aggressive. The V-fin is really good. The cannon, the eyes, which I will point out here, I did not use the foil sticker on these eyes. This is just the plastic you get, and it looks really good. It's molded in a nice, clear plastic, but it's a nice, vibrant green. Now, the light doesn't shine off it nearly as much as the foils, and you do get foils for it. But I wanted to see what these would look like against everything else, and I'm actually very surprised. I'm very pleased, and I hope that this type of stuff starts happening pretty much universally on every other kit, whether it's high-grade, real-grade, master-grade. I love this idea, and the fewer stickers I have to put on and mess up, the better. <laughs> Now, as we kind of move down, the torso is fine. Uh, you do get some of that panel lining opportunity on the red, and if you want, on kind of the neck portion of that lighter gray. But that's kind of it. Everything's molded in plastic. Everything looks nice. The vents are nice and sharp. But really, outside of that, there's nothing as spectacular as we saw on the Calamity. 
Now you do get a better look at those claws and the inner vents there on the shoulders. Those look really good. I'm very impressed with those. They're very subtle details that you're really not going to see from most poses, but you do get to see them from time to time, and that's very nice, right? It's not nearly as you know intricate as something like the inner frame of a Master Grade having all this nice surface detailing that gets covered up and you never see it. It does show itself in certain poses, and you know it's nice to be able to do that without taking parts off. Now, as we move down to the legs, you do get a little bit of kind of the more boring part of this kit, save for those thrusters. The thrusters are great. I'm glad that they actually posed them here in red, um, or actually molded them in red. Like I said, I do wish that dark navy was a different color, or maybe the thruster portion that sticks out is a different color red, or a different color from the red or the navy. But once again, a little bit of paint goes a long way with something like that if you really want to. It looks fine, it's passable, it's just something I feel like those get a little bit more lost in the grand scheme of things, and they would make really nice accents otherwise. But outside of that, the legs are fine. Visually speaking, there's nothing really too crazy to talk about with those. Now as we kind of go on to some of the accessories slash rest of the body, you get to see the claws here, and these are probably one of the coolest things on this kit that are almost entirely useless. I just love that they're there behind the back, um, in between, you know, the shoulders and the wings. They're very menacing looking. They're great. I do wish they had a little bit more posability to them, but they're very nicely detailed. They move pretty reasonable, and they just add a nice extra splash of color between all of the dark black and the navy and the gray and the red highlights on the wings. It's just a nice little extra detail in there. They have two different modes. You've got the kind of folded up uh, behind the wing mode as these are tied into the shoulder or the skirt armor. And then you have the other one that is kind of outstretched for its bird mode. Both look good. Both are serviceable enough. And you know, this is one of those things that it's a very minor thing for this kit, but it's just enough of this type of stuff happens that this kit actually turns out to be very interesting visually and has some kind of cool posability options. Now, as we move on to the backpack, this is probably like the least exciting, but still very serviceable and nice backpacks I've seen. It, you know, it has a bunch of red. That's cool. It's more of a kind of fighter looking thing on its own. It's not the striker packs or the wizard packs of the ale strike and the force um, impulse Gundam, but it is unique in its own way. You don't really get as much posability and stuff out without uh, with it. It's not going to be nearly as um, dynamic, but it serves what it needs to. It looks good in its bird mode. It looks good in just a regular backpack. You can move the wings out. They're on a fairly basic double like hinge system type setup. Um, but this is what you. These are the two modes you get for the most part. You get it all closed up or fully extended. They both look fine. And it's just kind of what it is. It's not a lot to write home about, but it's very serviceable and it matches with the rest of the kit. And once again, little things. If you get enough of those little things, they add up to something pretty big. Now for <laughs> the weapons, I guess. Uh, the big spike ball thing, very interesting. Once again, this whole kit, the whole mantra is very interesting engineering. And that's about it. You do have the capability of winding and unwinding the wire out of here. It has a lot of surface detailing that you can touch up if you decide to. I didn't, um, but you do have that option. And it is serviceable. I mean, it looks good. It has surface detailing if you really want to bring out some of that detail. Because, uh, you know, being all kind of great does kind of make it look a little boring for a spiked ball. Having the reeling thing on the inside is cool. But it's all, it's pretty much consistently betrayed by the fact that that bendable wire doesn't work very well. And I mentioned this in the unboxing. There's not really a good way to do this. So this was something I kind of Bandai's only really acceptable option was to put a stand with it. And it works well enough, you'll see in a little bit. But it's just one of those things. This is a cool thing in concept, but is very hard to bring out into plastic. But I think they did a pretty good job. Probably the most boring piece of this is the shield cans here. 
And they do have a handle that pops out on the bottom to use as a normal gun if you want to, but it does look kind of dumb that way. You do have some decent surface detailing, but once again, this dark navy is not really going to show either you know black, gray, or brown uh, panel lining markers super well. It does go a little bit further than that of the main armor, but it is kind of something to think about. It works decent as a shield. It is what it is. Uh, once again, nothing special to write home about, but it's there. Now, once you get it all posed up on a stand, it actually looks pretty good. I will say, even with posing, the shield cannons are probably the most boring part, unfortunately. But they're serviceable. If you want a shooting pose, you can absolutely do it. Uh, we'll see it in its gun configuration in a little bit. But here's kind of a your very basic, uh, more dynamic up on your stand pose. Not too difficult to do. I would say the biggest problems for posing are going to come in the hips and the shoulders. I'll talk about them more specifically in a moment individually. But here for the shoulders, you see that the arm isn't super stretched out like you would have on most other Gundams. It's not kind of brought out to the side. It's very forward facing. And that is partially due to how the shoulder mechanisms work. In order for the transformation, these do get limited. Having those big vent things in there connected to the cannon that's supposed to pop out in the transformation limits its range of motion even if the actual joint itself has that capability, the arm is still going to hit it, unfortunately. So you're not going to get any very drastic arm movements out of this. Now, you will get that in the legs, but we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. But just something to be aware of, if you're wanting to put this in some very, very dynamic poses and you do a lot of arm work, this might not be something you're going to enjoy moving around a lot. Now, as we go to a more kind of defensive, full thrusty looking pose here, the shield, it's okay. It's a little harder to bring around. Once again, because of those shoulders, it makes it a little bit more difficult, but you can do it. It's a fairly small shield portion as well, so take that as you will. And here you get to see the backpack fully open. If you were limited on shelf space or this isn't going to be like in the center of your shelving, um, if you've got like details or whatever, th this might be a little bit of a big wingspan for you. Now you can kind of angle them back a little bit, that helps, but generally speaking, these wings take up a lot of space. They look cool, but they also, if you're having it on a shelf Unless nothing else is in front of it, these are going to get lost, visually speaking, very easily. So keep that in mind. It's not a bad thing. It does help, but it's one of those things that if there's a Gundam that has a backpack that takes up a lot of shelf space, most of the time I'm not going to display it that way because, well, I'm at a premium for shelf space at the moment. And if it's just something like this that's a wing, I'm not really all that, you know, enthusiastic about it. Now, that being said, uh, there are some kits like the Strike Freedom or the Infinite Justice where the backpacks do things, so having them kind of spread out like that you know, makes more sense, but here, it's just not something that tickles my fancy as much. It looks fine, but it's just something I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit. Now, as we go to using that bendable wire in the mace thing, it works really well. The sand that comes with it the base of it or not the base but the bottom peg can plug into most of your uh, action stages so if you have a lot of those laying around this works really well with it the bendable wire is fine um, it doesn't really inhibit too much um, I do kind of wish they would have just left a hole in the actual mace portion itself versus the having a little clip on stand I know it works for the transformation and stuff, so I, I kind of get that. But just generally speaking, I don't like this look as much. Very minor nitpick, but it is what it is. But yeah, this is serviceable. This looks great. I, You know, if I had a lot of shelf space, this might be something I would consider doing. Um, I would have loved it if, you know, the bendable wire was strong enough, but there's so much weight on the end of that that you, I don't think there would have been a bendable wire they would have worked from a length standpoint. This still would have held this up. So this is kind of really the best actual practical application of this. It works. Is it ideal? No, but I think it's the best possible option you could get in actual live plastic. 
So now we move kind of towards using the gun shield thing, and it looks fine. The handle works fine. The, you know, I don't necessarily like this. This almost kind of gives some um, double Zeta vibes in a way. But, it, you know, it's a personal preference thing. Like I said, this is for me kind of the most boring part of the kit, the shield gun thing. It's cool that it's there. It's one of those little extra things that kind of helps tie the bigger package together. But this is something that I'm going to probably leave in the shield configuration and never really mess with it again. But if you do want to use it in the gun, it is very, very possible. Now we get to bring the claws out. And it's actually really nice that you can do this in the mobile suit mode. Um, it, it's mostly for the bird mode. I'm not going to lie here. It's a little awkward to do. But you can do it, and it looks pretty intimidating. Now, I did try to angle the head to make it look like it was firing its cannon, but any of those chest or head-mounted cannons like this, it's always really hard to sell the motion of it. So, you know, take that as you will. It's kind of more of just an extra dash of color in the head than anything else, but it is there, and it is marginally impressive, but from an actual posing standpoint, it's kind of unimpressive looking. Now, the legs, my long, very short diatribe actually on the legs. The hips on this are terrible. Now, I've, I've messed with it enough that I'm almost positive it is not me doing this. Because um, when I, you'll see in a moment, when I messed with the Calamity Gundam, this was a similar issue. Now, they use different hip joints, but it's a similar concept. But something with this full mechanics line that unless they really make the waist joint the hips a little bit more substantial having all that extra weight makes it significantly weaker so you can do stuff like this but know that if you've got glass surfaces for your shelves if you've got detolfs if you've got a slick surface this is going to have some trouble standing the weight is really going to push the hips down which is going to push the legs out now, if you've got a nice surface texture or it's going to be on a stand, that's not really something to concern yourself with. But keep in mind, these still have leg issues. And that's probably the biggest posing issue outside of the shoulders. That's kind of the most consistent one I had. I could work around the shoulders, but this, this was actually a problem that wasn't over-engineered. It was just kind of left as is, unfortunately. Now, the bird mode. It's there. It's cool that it does it, and a lot of the engineering neatness that comes out of this is for this specifically. But it's one of those things that there's not a design out there that's going to sell me on a bird mode over a mobile suit mode. It's cool that it does it. It looks good. A lot of the cool engineering is there, but this is not something I'm going to pose this way. If you want to, I totally understand because this is one of the better versions of it. But generally speaking, this is not something I really will ever pose up this way again. I will probably never do the transformation again. But once again, that's a personal preference. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, you can put it in the bird mode, but can you put the calamity on it like the promotional pictures? And you can, and you could do it with a single stand. Yes, a lot of the promotional images show two stands, but I was able to pull it off with one, which is great because I only had one and had space for one. So good for me. You do have some little clips that go on the back of the wings for the Calamity's feet to clip into, but you will still need to have it on a stand. There's just too much weight there otherwise, and it works. If you want it on your shelf like this, I don't blame you. It's actually kind of cool looking. Um, I do think that side by side, they look better standing together, but this is possible and it's fairly easy to do. I'm not going to say it is easy, but, you know, a little bit of time, a couple of minutes, and you can probably get this done pretty quick. This is probably one of the easier things I had to do this video, surprisingly. Um, but, yeah, you can absolutely do it. One stand holds enough of the weight. Now, as you can see there, I kind of had to uh, uh, mess with it a little bit, but you can get it to work, and it's fairly stable. So that's cool. Now, with the actual comparisons here we have the calamity and once again calamity is going to be more visually interesting but if you're more of an engineering guy you like more of the kind of internal building process you're probably gonna like the raider a little bit more both are very serviceable both look good next to each other i would say if you like one it's worth picking up the other but 
kind of a personal preference. I like both of them quite a bit. I think they bring different things to the table. They both have different strengths, but overall they're both very solid and very stable. Now, of course, we can't have a full mechanics Gundam Seed thing without comparing it to the Freedom 2.0. And as you can see, it still holds up, even with some of the lesser uh, visual appeal that uh, you have by comparison to the Freedom or the Calamity. It still holds up pretty well. If you have them either kind of fighting on your shelf or just standing next to each other, they do look good. And this is kind of a nice contrast to the Freedom. You know, all the white parts on the Freedom are pretty much black or dark gray here. You do have the red accent against the blue. So they are a nice contrast on your shelf if you've got them fairly close together. Overall, I do think that both are really nice. So to wrap up my 20 minute dialogue here, I do thank you for sticking through to this. Um, is this a must buy? Honestly, yeah. 100%. This is something that it still has enough of the visual kind of full mechanics, kind of master grade light vibe that it still has that benefit that you get kind of from the Calamity. It's not as drastic, but it's there. But you have more interesting engineering. So if you're more of a build person, this is going to be unique. This is not something you've built before. Yeah, you'll have like the elbows, the knees, kind of the leg portions to an extent that are similar but it is different the shoulders are different the way the knee mechanism works is different the front of the leg is different the backpack is different the claws are different there's enough here to spice it up so if you're looking for a different build but don't want to go to something like a ship or a, <laughs> a metabot or figureized standard this is a good way to kind of change that up without going too drastically in a different direction if you like visuals, like I said, still good enough, still a must buy. If you hate Gundam Seed, go ahead and pass. I don't know why you watched 20 minutes into this video, frankly, but everyone else, if you even are kind of okay with Gundam Seed or you've never watched it but you like the designs, must buy. It's very nice, even with the transformation and some of its stability issues, I generally think that this is still carrying on the torch of being really mind blow well, I'll say mind blowing but still very good for full mechanics like this is still progressing it in a direction it doesn't feel like the line stagnated it's still visually impressive it's more engineered it is kind of the best full mechanics out right now but anyway those are my thoughts if you've built this let me know in the comments down below if you haven't you've got questions I'll do my best to answer them but as always, friends, I've been the Spicer here for the Gunplay Network. Please do your best to stay safe and keep on building.